I will be putting a light inside here. So what I did was I clean, cleaned out some of the center areas of this piece. I cut this out um, and cut the bottom out. I'll be adding a little detail piece there so that when a light shines there, you'll see a little bit of the detail. Um, another reason why I removed the antenna from the backpack is I moved the antenna to the back of the head here. And all I did was drill a small hole, add a piece of styrene, and a smaller styrene rod as the antenna piece. So that's basically the headpiece right there. So what I want to do with the headpiece here is I need to add a little piece of detailing to the bottom of this because I'm going to have a light on the inside shining into here and from the clear pink piece you can see the bottom. So I cleared out the bottom because originally now nah, there was a hole and it was filled with stuff. So I cut that out and I cleared out the middle piece so that I could have you know, uh, a spot for the light to go in and then put my detail piece here. Now to save from scratch building a piece completely from uh, out of styrene parts, I have boxes and boxes of spare parts uh, that I could dig through to look for, you know, just something I could possibly cut up or something I could fabricate or glue together to look for um, to add that detail. I'm gonna just take this piece here, and this is the back back leg piece of a one year war Gundam. Cut out this detail piece here, where there's some decent panel linings and some nice design here, and fit that under. glue this in place using just some styrene glue and I can fill this with putty over here I have some very thin styrene that I'm going to use to fill that little gap right there So next up, I want to add a light to the internal piece right here, to the head. So this is just kind of a test view of what I would want to do is have this light, you know, here and kind of have this hidden. Or, But my problem is there's not that much space inside the head for, you know, the battery and all the switches and whatnot. What I figured I want to do is I'm going to drill through this piece right here and have the light and wires come up from here that way I can have the light just kind of sitting right here and um, that should be, that should work fine what I can also do is drill out a hole back here and sit the light down right here that way I have this whole back space to hide the wires so once it's in here like so, you won't be able to see the wires. And I can have the wires hidden inside you know, the chest piece. And also put a switch inside inside this uh, chest piece area because this is pretty much an open cavity. And because these LED leads are fairly thin, I'm going to get a particularly thin or fine drill bit to do this work. And that should be fairly fine enough. I'm just going to drill 
two holes in the back of this area. Side by side. And my LED could fit, or my LED leads could fit like so. Run my battery for a test. <clears throat> Put my top piece on just to see what that looks like. And what I might do is push the LED up a little bit so that I don't have a direct light focused on the clear pieces. Now this is pretty much trial and error because every kit when you add LEDs is kind of um, a different beast. Each kit is designed differently, so there's no right way or wrong way to do this. There's just different ways to do this. So I have my LED pointed up now. I'll put my top piece together. And do another test lighting. I think I like this better. So that it's not... <coughs> so much shining into the uh, clear piece but it's illuminating the entire area but I think I have my LED problem problem for this kit solved now this will go in uh, the leads and batteries will go in here now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and plan out my wiring for uh, lighting this part so my LED leads have been trimmed down here and what I usually do when I do the uh, when I um, fire up LEDs is I use a wire wrapping method so I use a very thin 30 gauge um, wire and my trusty little stripping tool that comes in my wire wrapping kit strip my wire. I've drilled two small holes through the, the upper torso piece here so I have um, two uh, wires I could drop through here and I'm gonna trim this down so I don't need too much wire besides this is just a test fitting anyways so prepare all my wires that will be my positive side. That should be my negative. Wire wrapping is pretty simple. Um, there's two holes in this wire wrapping tool. A hole on top and a hole in the center. The wire goes through the hole on top and the centerpiece gets wrapped around the lead and just twist and I have this disconnected <coughs> and there it's these are wrapped and I could go ahead and test this against my battery, which I have wrapped in a piece of silicone mold. So I have uh, molding 
uh, leftover uh, silicone molds that I use to for to reuse in other silicone molds, or I'll cut them up and it's a perfect battery holder. So I could slip my leads, the positive here, and then the negative here, and this holds on to my battery. Or this, this holds um, the connection fairly decently. If I don't wiggle it around too much, it, it'll stay lit. Like so. So now that I know that this works, I can go ahead and thread this down through here. Now what I'm going to use here as my switching um, element is a reed switch. This is basically a glass tube with two metal uh, leads inside that are that are not contacted with each other. Uh, with a, when a magnet comes into play, this will close the circuit and the it will allow power to go through this uh, uh, circuit. So I'm going to have my reed switch in here. I'm going to connect one part of the lead to I'm going to connect one part of my lead to the reed switch like so. Now that's wire wrapped. Now prepare another piece of wire for the outbound connection. Now this is a very simple LED uh, connection. There's a Battery, there's a power source, there is a switch, and there is a light. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Well, it does. Power source and light. But a uh, switch helps make things uh, a little bit more turn off and on -y, I guess. So I have this going out. <clears throat> so I'm just going to slide my reed switch back here and have it connected like so. Now i got to remember which side was my positive, which side was my negative. Which will be a simple test. Connect two ends to my power source and apply a magnet to the location and it turns on. You can see, well, I know that this works. So this is my assembly here and again this is so this is a temporary setup, so I can continue, you know, building and finishing this kit up. Now for this main chest or belly piece, I've cut this open and I clear cleared out one side of it so I could fit my battery pack. So this battery pack will go onto this side. This will connect here, like so. And if all goes well it connects together like so. All the wires are hidden and if I apply a power source back here it won't turn on. <laughs> I can hear it switching so I'm guessing something happened that didn't connect the power source together. Yeah it slipped out. So 
well, let's try this again as I carefully mount this inside. Now, apply my read switch, and there we go. Or apply my magnet to the switch, and it'll light it up. So what I can do is drill a hole into the backpack, and when I connect the backpack to his uh, back piece, like so, it will turn on. It will activate his light. And there's a very simple way to light up uh, the head of this uh, kit. So I drilled a hole back here and I accidentally cut off a piece of the peg. Has, hence he has a corresponding piece of uh, metal rod sticking out of his back. And uh, glued on a magnet there. So when I go to put this guy together, he lights up. And that's pretty much how my switch is going to work. Is like this. And you can see that it's all self-contained. 